Welcome back to the Why So Series podcast, and we are back today with uh, some nerd news. So we don't really have any shows. Some of the shows are on the break, so we figured we cover some some news stories and comic books and movies and TV. Um, give our little perspective on that just to keep us up with what's going on. Um, but we also have Danielle back today, and she finally saw Black Panther. She's the last one. That's why she wasn't on our review. So, uh, Danielle, what did you think of the film? I thought that it was incredible. Um, I've been waiting so long to to witness a Black Marvel character's movie. Um, it was so dope on so many levels, um, from a political view to how I think that we should do things here. Um, for from addressing, you know how Africa, well, <laughs> what kind of but Africa? We everything stems from Africa. Our our people. Um, just it, I have a lot of opinions on it, but I can't really go into too much detail right now. But overall, I really enjoyed the movie. It touched me emotionally in different areas, and also. It was super dope to witness did that. Did you done. cry? Did you cry? Black, his- Black History Month. No, I did not cry. I ain't gonna lie though. When he, when I, when he fell, I knew he didn't die, but I was just mad that you know he he had to fall like that. That wasn't cool. But <laughs> I knew I had a feeling he was gonna come back and be a beast like he was. But um, yeah, I, I didn't cry, but I really enjoyed it. Full disclosure: Me and my cousin cried. Me and Brandon cried, and mm-hmm. I don't, I don't care. We cried. I, I cried several times, like at least three times in that movie. The first you time cried. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, man. Tears of joy, tears of pride. Uh, just, yeah, just. I cried when I, I cried. saw those black women fucking those people up in the casino. Because I ain't never seen that on <laughs> film before. Yeah, they definitely represented us. They represented. They, I cried they, when I saw uh, Sterling K. Brown uh, say, No tears for me. Because he makes me cry on This Is Us a lot. So. I had seen him, and I just I got triggered, and then I just cried because like a lot of the uh, black dad moments because I love my daddy, and if that's the pride and the joy you see in your sons, uh, I know I finally got it. I was like, damn, like I might want to have a kid now so I can do the whole Simba Lion King thing over a mountain and shit. Like this is my son; he is the prized possession of the world. Like I mean, I definitely get it. So it was no, a lot the, of things. The part that got me the that that I thought showed so much integrity and and just dignity was at the end when even though Michael B. Jordan was trying to kill um Black Panther, he he decided to still offer him humility and and, and offer to heal him mm-hmm. and um despite what he came there to do and despite what he did to him, I thought that that was so so powerful because it showed that listen you know you you weren't aware fully of what this world was you know and he he didn't make him pay for that and that showed so freaking much like so much yeah, but yeah that didn't... Killmonger is the villain like you've been seeing a lot of like a lot of people been making jokes like Killmonger was right and I mean I get it it's fun but like there is a distinct difference between him and T'Challa so, like, T'Challa was the hero, and they made it clear throughout the film, especially with, like, how indiscriminate Killmonger killed people and when he choked out that woman and made him burn the the herbs and shit. Like, they made him, like, divulge into a villain, and that end scene was the culmination of showing the difference between the two characters. So, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you got to realize this crimes of my father, you know what I mean? Like, that's literally T'Challa's... I mean, T'Chaka's problem that T'Challa mm-hmm. is trying to fix. Well, because... that's the, well, that's a Marvel, tro- I mean, I don't want to say trope, but that is, that, if you, I was thinking about that today, but if you actually, like, go back and look at the Marvel movies, like, one thing, one of the common themes is that, like, the pe- you create your own villains. Like, all, right. a lot yeah. of villains are a creation of you fucking up in the past. So, like, just, like, in Thor Ragnarok, like, Hela was essentially the Killmonger character in a way. Like, right. she 
she was there at first, but she got ostracized and she thought she was the rightful person to the throne and she wanted to come back because she didn't think Thor was worthy. Like, um, and it's always, and Iron Man 1, Obadiah Stane, was only there because Tony wanted to sell weapons and greed and shit, which created him. Ultron is a fucking manifestation of, of Tony Stark. Like, they've done that a lot in this film, uh, in the Marvel MCU. So, uh, I, I thought that was great, their characterizations. All right. So let's get to some news. So we'll start for something funny to start. So uh, Michael B. Jordan snuck into Black Panther screenings on opening night. Uh, um, Michael B. Jordan opened up his experience sneaking into an opening night screener of Black Panther, pa- Black Panther, which he did in order to see the reactions of fans in a normal theater setting. So uh, Danielle, I'm, I'm I'm sure you probably uh, find Michael B. Jordan a little attractive. What would you do if you end up sitting next to him in in the, in the theater? If I seen if I let me tell you something about his fine ass because mm. if I seen him, I mean to be honest, I'm, I I do get shy when I'm infatuated with a human being. <laughs> so um, in my mind, I'd be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I I'm about to walk up on him, you know. But in reality. I'd probably just freak the hell out. Probably you ain't cry. saying shit. You ain't saying shit. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like oh, I'm, I'm just going to freak out. You know, probably cry, but still, I'm, I'm, I'm bold, though. So I'd probably still make my way over there. Of course, I would scream hysterically. And Damn, for real? Yes. Oh, I would, B2K boy group. You, you be boy banding it out here? Oh, B2K! That was I'm you? Like, yes, it was. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Okay. I'm I'll become a football player the day that I see him walk in on a uh, in a movie theater, and I'm there. I'm just saying. What about you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that headline, and I looked at Big Mike because you know he's my roommate, and I was like, "Man, how come that stuff never happens to us?" And then he looked at us, and he said, "Mike, even if that did happen to us, you really think he would have sat next to us?" And I was like, "Me <laughs> <laughs> slapper. That is a me slapper." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? He definitely would not. <laughs> but that's good. I mean, <laughs> it's cool. Um, also, did you guys it. see the pictures of, like, the two kids who tried to sneak in and they dressed up as a tall man? No, oh, that's yeah. cute. So they had they got on each other's shoulders and wore, like, a trench coat and tried to sneak into the theater by themselves without their parents. That's cute as shit, oh, that's, though. That's cute. No, I didn't see that. So my, my thing when I heard that, I mean, when you just read that headline, is like, is my man wearing these medium ass sweaters like I see him on every goddamn appearance wearing? Like, bro, I know you've been in the gym, yo. Stop wearing the medium ass sweaters, yo. Like, he was on these <laughs> Samero. He was on some other shit wearing this medium ass uh, sweater. Like, come on, bro. Like, them shit, man. I, anyway, but anyway, I, shout out to Michael B. Jordan. He was awesome in that movie. Uh, we'll but stick- those medium ass sweaters are gonna stop. <laughs> Yeah, we'll stick with the great, because this this is going to be part Black Panther news episode. Uh, Black Panther's box office hits $242 million four-day total, passing Star Wars The Last Jedi. Uh, Black Panther had the biggest Monday at the box office of all time, earning $40.2 million. That Damn. gross combined with the film's $201.8 million three-day gross gives the film a four-day total of $242 million. That four day total is the second highest of all time behind only Star Wars The Force Awakens, which earned two hundred and eighty eight million back in twenty fifteen. Black Panther's total surpasses surpasses that of Marvel The Avengers two twenty six, Jurassic World two thirty four, and Star Wars The Last Jedi two hundred and forty one million. That's fucking crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> the idea That's that insane. And here's the here's the thing where I had to get my little dig at uh Justice League. I knew it. Um, just Black Panther made more in his first three days domestically than Justice League's total domestic total throughout the entire time it was in the theaters. So there's there's that of how good Justice League was. I'll just say that. Also, uh, second uh, last weekend was Peter Rabbit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So the, the, the three-day total for Black Panther was $201 million, and coming in second place was Peter Rabbit with $17 million. I heard that movie was terrible. And in third, <laughs> Mike's Mike's favorite movie of the se- of the year, uh, Fifty Shades Free, which I've yeah. never seen. Million. That is an unwarranted comment. 
I've never seen that. <laughs> and somehow, you have a moment, so you probably saw it. And somehow, Jumanji in his ninth week in the in the fucking theaters came in fourth. Nice. So yeah, Kevin that, Hart making that money. Listen, that movie's made three hundred and seventy nine million dollars domestically. Yo, that's God. a good. That's a good movie though. Like yo, and The Rock is a treasure, a treasure because he can ignite us all with his all right, uh, brown Daniel, skin. What do you think about The Rock? So I'm at, I work with college students, most of them white, mm-hmm. and I talk mm-hmm. to them and I'm like. So you guys think The Rock's hot, right? And they're all like, no, he's too big. Oh, no, they're fucking tripping. First of all, <laughs> first of all, he can slam me any kind of way he wants to. Okay, okay. Let me tell you something. I've been a fan since he did that damn eyebrow. The Raising his eyebrow. <laughs> the people's eyebrow. That's the sexiest, sexiest the eyebrow. eyebrow. The sexiest eyebrow I've ever seen in my life. But no, really, um... I like how big he is. Like that's 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 sexy. That Listen, means you know. Mike and Tyson, can... we be in arguing about this at work all the time, and I am flabbergasted to the fact that none of them think the Rock is hot. None of them. They're tripping. That's because they Brandon, don't feel like he's good at Danielle's right. Them. They are. They are messed up. I mean, seriously. <laughs> like I don't know what they're looking at the same person. He has charisma. He oozes charisma first and foremost. Uh, first his part, smile is winning. He's right. Listen. And that's salt and pepper, the new look he got right now. Let oh, me yeah, tell he does you. Have a salt and pepper look. He better stop playing with people for real. <laughs> I say, them girls, you know, if I can switch bodies with anybody, it's the rock. I I definitely am uh yeah, I don't I can't think of anybody else that that's definitely uh that's number one. That's number two. Cause I can't I gotta put somebody over him because I can't go with the same thing he did. But uh yeah, good. That's a good one. His name suits him. He's built like a rock. He's strong like a rock. <laughs> he is. Now he's got pebbles. <laughs> his daughter's he's name not... is Pebbles. Yes. Is that what his no, daughter's name is? I don't know if is? that's a real name. I'm, that was a joke. No, it, no, no seriously, <laughs> it's, it's his first daughter. Uh, he called her Pebbles. It's, I don't think <laughs> that's, a <real> name. <laughs> that's cool as shit. He, he played too much, so his song gonna be called Bam Bam. Oh, he played shit. too much. Damn, that's so, funny. Wow. Uh, this one is uh, Michael will be appreciative of every Black Panther character returning in Avengers: Infinity War. So I was on the Mocha Minutes podcast, and she was concerned. She was like, "I really want to know if uh, Sherry's going to be in Black Panther." And I was, I mean, Infinity War. And I was like, uh, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure she'll be on here." So uh, somebody made an article with the confirmed with Marvel, and so basically, T'Challa obviously is going to be in there. Uh, technically, Bucky, he was in Black Panther, so obviously he's going to be in there. Uh, Shuri is going to be in there. And in fact, she got a concept art for her own suit. I don't think we're going to see it this soon, but they're kind of teasing that already. Uh, Okoye, played by Denai Guerrero, the, fuck, the Dora Milaje, she's going to be in there. Yeah, you can see half these people in the trailer. And in a surprise, and, and, and Baku. And what? And He's in the trailer. If you look really hard, I rewatched it after Black Panther. There's the scene um, where they're like in Wakanda and Black Panther's leading, and you can see Okoye behind him, and you can see a few of the Avengers. But then, like behind, right next to Okoye, you can see him in the trailer. He's there. Oh, I didn't him. even see that. It's hard. You got to really look. You got like you got to do basically. You got to pause it. And you got to look because he's like in the back. But you can see that that's him. I got a question. I don't know. I think that they, they should have made him work out a little more. Cause, no, no. Uh, Winston well, Duke, awesome. Listen, the thirst for Winston Duke on Twitter and Facebook recently has been overwhelming. Overwhelming. Because overwhelming. He's, he's, a, he's a big chocolate bar, but I'm just saying he just he just needs. No, he has, that's yes, crazy. He has, he has titties, okay? But you that doesn't have, matter. Oh, does he? Man. Are you sure? Yes, he does. Yes, he does because oh, I was no, staring. Man. I was staring. Okay. I just think it's awesome that like T'Challa. Okay, so when we have these white films, these actors get super ripped for like Zac Efron for like Baywatch or some shit like that. Like they get super ripped for no reason. But like T'Challa looked like a natural. T'Challa was kind of ripped though. Like you know what I'm saying, but he looked natural. You know what I mean? Like a natural, just dude that you know does what he does. He's Black Panther and shit, right? And so did Michael B. Jordan to the extent he looked like a soldier. Fuck no, you know Michael I mean? like, B. Jordan was ripped to shreds. Just say you are what are you true. talking about? I'm, 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 all right, I'm just talking about like look. Okay, Zac Efron and then Michael B. Jordan. It's all I'm saying is it looks about. more realistic. I'm just saying no. it looks more re- like a dude that hits the gym a lot. On um, on um, Baco, whatever. Him. And he just looked like a normal dude that's swole. Like he got muscles. Like no, uh, but for 
I'm just saying. For, I mean, he looked good, you know, but I'm just saying he could have been a little bit more toned. Everybody in the Jabari tribe is swole as fuck. Uh, so yeah. I'm yeah. scared of everybody. Uh, Ryan from I'm the Black Guy Tip said the uh, <laughs> next year on the yard, all the cues going to be the Jabari tribe. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Uh, that's facts. Because <laughs> I was like, all these motherfuckers are huge. They're some big black dudes, yo. I know they kept barking. I couldn't live up there in the mountains. It's cold as fuck. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got enough meat on my bones. I'm not, I'm so, not making it. The million dollar question. Oh, Ramonda's going to be in there too. Angela Bassett. So, out of all those people, any of them going to die? Or all of them going to die? That's the question. Uh, we can't kill Mbaku. Mbaku, I feel like he's he going to say some funny shit. And uh, I'll take his ass back to this mountain. You can't kill Sherry because black women go crazy. And no, she's too good. I do think the mom, I mean, Angela, might, she might be one. She might be a target. Because they're going to go for um somebody. That Black Panther... Has you know the craziest heart. thing about Angela Bassett is she playing like a grandmother, and I'm like well, she looks way too good to be someone's grandmother. So I realize she like she's old enough to be somebody's grandmother. <laughs> First of all, if if she have all them African garbs on and she just has some tight form fitting, you'd be like, hold up, she can still get it right now. But whose grandmother is she? She's somebody's mother. She's not nobody's grandmother. She old enough to be some. I said she old enough to be somebody's grandmother. You think so? How old is she? She's fifty. Like fifty. You, you trying to tell me T'Challa not old enough to have no kids? He is. I'm just saying she. I'm just saying she got. She didn't have any grandkids. I'm just saying. I said okay, she's okay, old you're right enough though. to be somebody's grandmother. You right though. You right. You right. Uh, she is gorgeous. Anyway, I had a question. Okay, so when Sherry was talking about uh, facing broken white man, that she was talking about Bucky, right? Yes. Okay. She was talking about Bucky. Um. This one is a uh, uh, Mike's Hassoon special. Uh, Black Panther and Daredevil could be the perfect crossover for MCU movies and TV. I'd be so down. Uh, Black Panther. I'd be so down. Is cl- currently claiming the throne in Marvel Cinematic Universe with a massive opening weekend haul and overwhelming critical praise, an impact with fans that dignify the film's release being denoted as bona fide cultural milestone. Milestone. Now the Black Panther movie character and mainstream crossover hits, fans are already speculating about how the franchise could be woven deeper into the MCU. For our own part, we think the Black Panther is in a unique position to build a significant bridge between the TV and movie division of the MCU. Uh, so they basically think they're basically taking some stuff from the comic books uh, where the Dare, basically what, at one point Black Panther becomes the Panther of Hell's Kitchen. He takes over for Daredevil. Uh, and they kind of have a somewhat of a friendship uh, in the comic books. Uh, so you've seen Daredevil, uh, Devin, and Black Panther. Do you think that could work out? I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, but you think no, it it's not gonna happen, and it can't work out. When if you look at the Daredevil line, they're just doing way too much destruction in the city of New York to to weave in T'Challa and this this uh, African dignitary because. Uh, like they're literally destroying New York City on Daredevil. Like, there, like, there's not much left in New York. I mean, Hell's Kitchen in New York at this point to like try to throw another character that big in there. And then we just had the Defenders, so like, you can't do it. It's like it's almost impossible. Have you like, seen you Daredevil, think? Danielle? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. It's the Netflix show. Oh, I tried to watch it, but I. I think yeah, I we will sit out. down one day and we will we will go through it. We will no, skip through the first I got, season. I got You're turned make off. Mike, cry. On... Mike, listen, okay. I got I can't remember which which one I got turned off on, but I was watching it in in the beginning, like I like I did Flash. But then season two was really good, Daniel. Like season two is groundbreakingly yeah. good. The Punisher. It's been a long time. No, the Punisher. No, that's that's my. I love when I tell you I love that show. The Punisher started in Daredevil. So season two, that's what oh, we get. Oh, you watched the Punisher? Oh, I finished the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. So no, Dale, you have Brandon to watch season two. Brandon hasn't finished it yet. All right, whatever. You have to watch season two of, of Daredevil if you like I think I, what year did it come out? What year did it come out? Uh, season two came out, I guess, 16? Let me see. I okay. I don't, I don't remember. I watch so many damn shows, I don't even... <laughs> I can't even keep up. Also, while we're talking about shows, uh, Westworld is coming back, Legion is coming back, 
and they got me on this Krypton show. Um, I'm not fucking with that shit. Uh, I'm just not. Same. I don't, I don't think it looks good. Did you just saw the same preview I saw? What are you talking about? I know, and I didn't. I wasn't crazy about it. I wasn't either. They got Brainiac, fuck. the real so? green Brainiac. He seems like he could be sinister, but I don't think the show's gonna be good. Shit, they Thank got you. him. They got him stealing cities and keeping it for his own collection. That's about as Brainiac as you can get. 2015 I, was Daredevil. Season two. Season one. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so season two, probably six. I mean, seventeen. Uh, 16. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys are tripping. Krypton's gonna be fucking good. Um, do you watch? Uh, do you guys watch The Magicians? No. Yo, I started it. It's actually so good. pretty dope. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. Dope. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> Mike said, I've never seen it. <laughs> there is a very interesting story. Uh, Sony exec threw a sandwich at Kevin Feige during Spider Man negotiations. Yes. Uh, with the success of Spider-Man Homecoming and all the excitement, sur- <laughs> can you imagine? Ah, fuck you. Being in a board I'm gonna, meeting? I'm going to throw this fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwich at What do you think the sandwich was? Salami? Pastrami? No, what are you talking about? It's a watercress sandwich. Turkey? Wait, what was this headline? Turkey. Sony exec threw a sandwich at Kevin Feige during Spider-Man negotiations. Why? So with the success of Spider-Man Homecoming and all the excitement surrounding the character's return in Avengers Infinity War... It can sometimes be easy to forget the idea of Spider-Man being a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe was once highly unlikely. Sam Raimi's trilogy made the property a high commodity for Sony. It wasn't until the critical and financial shortcomings of the Amazing Spider-Man films that Kevin Feige seized the opportunity to negotiate for the wall crawler's safe return to Marvel. While we know how the negotiations turned out, apparently the initial lunch meeting between Sony Pictures Chairman Amy Pascal and Feige got off to a rocky start. According to a report from the Wall Street Journal, Ben Fritz, uh, from his book, The Big Picture, The Fight for the Future of Movies. Pascal threw her sandwich at Feige during the meeting and told the Marvel Studios boss to get the fuck out in a half-joking manner. Despite this being a less than ideal way to start off the negotiation process, Feige got his way in the end. Now, we the fans are all winners. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> she threw a sandwich at that man. <laughs> and he still won. <laughs> And now Sony's yeah. never going to get Spider-Man back. It's a rat. Oh, yeah, never. Yeah. It is a rat. Uh, so I thought that was fucking funny. Um, let me see here. What do we got? Uh, ah, here we go. Danielle don't know nothing about this because she's she's not on she's not on the train yet. Uh, but this is something to look forward to. Ages of Shield. Don't be trying to me out. Thank you. Go ahead. Ages of Shield <laughs> episode 100 will reveal Ghost Rider's deal with Colson. There you go, Mike. You've been asking. There you go. Yeah, you've been asking for it, Mike. You definitely did. The All right, well, I'm waiting to see what it is. We're going to wait. Oh, next week. It's right. It's next week. We're back, baby. Next week. Next we're in week, here. we're back. The 100th episode of Marvel's Ages of Shield is titled The Real Deal. The deal in question is the deal that Phil Colson made with Ghost Rider in order to process, to possess the being's supernatural powers long enough to defeat the rogue life model decoy called Ada. Fans got a hint of what the deal cost Colson, potentially his life, in the mid-season finale episode of Ages of Shield. Now all will be brought to light in episode one hundred. When is is that the first one of the? Uh, how many? See. How many until? Episode one hundred. It's next week. Yeah, no, I, I think, don't I think, think it's next week. Um, it is March. March third. It's coming back. Yeah, but I don't think that's episode one hundred. Oh no, no, you're right. No, that's going to be March seventeenth. Let me see. March. Uh, March. March following that, ep- that is episode one hundred. The series set to air March ninth. Okay, March 9th is uh, episode 100. So it's the second episode back. Uh, That's such a bad. Listen, I've been fiending for this show. I can't wait for it to come back. Uh, I enjoyed the break to like get myself together, but I I need I need my I need my Asian shield to come back. Chris Uh, Rock dropped that fucking tambourine shit on Netflix. That shit is awesome. I Uh, watch Chris Rock. Chris Rock's everything. It's fucking smart shit. Gotta watch, you guys gotta watch Westworld. Mike, I can't believe Mike hasn't watched Westworld. That would it's be good, but I can't your favorite fuck fucking show. Mike, listen, let me tell you something. Yeah, Mike, Mike supports Westworld. artificial intelligence. He thinks that's a good thing. He thinks that these robots aren't gonna take us over. And he yeah, wants to get so he wants the robots over. to do all types of crazy shit. <laughs> let listen, Mike. You have to promise me you're gonna watch Westworld. We need we're gonna do it for the show before season two. You just want me to watch it and hope that it'll convince me otherwise. I, 
Mike, you love artificial intelligence. Devin, tell him if he likes AI shit, Wes, it's you will love. AI. Wes. Brandon, I'm telling you, if I watch the show, it's not going to make it any better. It's probably going to make me want to do it even more. No, 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 no. Have you seen Westworld, Danielle? Nope. Oh my God, Westworld. There's super rich white people. No, no, you, no. You can't tell it because they're ruining the stuff. So basically, all right, I can, you can tell. So basically, in Westworld, it's like this. It's like this guy created like this world, like this amused, this huge. He got this huge, huge, huge plot of land, and he created like this like real life amusement park where like these rich white people can come and live their fantasy. So like, and it's uh-huh. and it's based in in the fantasy world. It's like a Western time. So you come and you're like a cowboy, and they give you like a six shooter, and you can go out, and all the people that you interact with are like robots. So you go out there, and they but they're like robots that can process things. They're not like robots like tin cans. They look at like people. They have insides like LMDs, like an Agent Shield. So like, <laughs> they're out there like fucking the women robots. And because if they're built like people inside and out, um, and so you can go on like things like you can go out and like be like a Western guy and try to save the girl and shoot the guy. And like, it's like this big amusement park, but something happens and basically the robots start to become sentient to an extent. So like the robots start to realize like they get killed and then she wakes up the next day and she's like, why am I back? I have these memories of getting killed. So it's it's all about like testing what's human and what's what's what really it means to be human and and there's like a big twist at the end that you will not see coming. It's great though because like the, literally they have scripts and everything and like after after the scenes plays out uh, they have a crew come in and, and reset things. It's it's, it's really good. It's like, really it's, crazy. It's very- but the tw- I'm trying to tell you I haven't seen a show where I didn't see the twist coming as much as that one. Yeah, yeah, you don't see that. You do shit. not see that twist coming. You got. We're gonna have to watch it for the show, Mike. Trust me, you'll love it. All right, I'll I know watch you, it. You'll love it. You too, Danielle. You gotta watch some good shit. All right, uh, okay. let's see what else we got here. Ah, now this this news this news really this news was really near and dear to my heart. I know exactly what you're gonna say. Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur yep. animated series is in the works at Disney from Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, Hot on the Hills is the release of Black Panther. Another black Marvel character is getting their shine. This time is an animated series. Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur is in development, development at Disney Channel, at the Disney Channel from Lawrence Fishburne. So, for those of you who don't know, who Moon Girl is Moon Girl is basically this black girl named Lun- Lunella Lafayette. Uh, she's an inhuman, and she's nine years old, and she is the smartest person in the Marvel universe. Uh, she has, she teams up with a red dinosaur called Devil Dinosaur, and she goes, and she's basically a superhero, but she's always fixing shit, Uh, she's also in a lot of the, uh, comics with Riri Williams, who's the new, uh, Iron, Iron Man. Man. Her name is Iron Heart now, but she's a uh. black teenager who's really smart, uh, and she's, she hangs out a lot with the X-Men as well, so, uh, they're considering, uh, how you say her name? Miss Marsai Martin from Black Blackish, the little girl. Oh, okay. There's consent that people want her to be the voice for uh, Lunella. What the hell is Siri um, talking about? Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, I know you, some of you may not know much about Moon Girl, but that I can't wait to see that. That that series is so fucking great. I've read every single episode, uh, issue of it, and I can't wait till that gets made. Uh, let me see. Oh, Mike, you're too young for this one, but Devin will appreciate this. Uh, <laughs> I can't even believe I'm about to read this headline. Crowdfunded Shaq Fu revival game finally coming out this what? spring. <laughs> do you, do you know like that, uh, Danielle? You remember that game? This has been a long time. The early 90s made a bad habit out of terrible action games, cashing in on brands and celebrities. One of the latter was Shaq Fu, which has become a punchline in worst games of all time list for franchising out NBA star Shaquille O'Neal into a bad fight fighter filled with confusion and mismatch of myths. Instead of ruin, some saw a catchy promise and revival was successfully crowdfunded in 2014. Friends who collectively sunk over $450,000 to this dream. Your time is coming. Shaq Fu, a legend reborn, will arrive in PC and consoles this spring, including the Nintendo Switch. God damn, that's awful. <laughs> That's awful. Hold on, is there a trailer? Yo, 
Hold up. Hold up. Is there a trailer? Yo, Shaq oh, be shit. getting this fucking money, <laughs> though. Hold up. Let me see if I can play this trailer for you guys. This shit is fucking funny. Yo, Shaq is out here getting paid left and right, yo. I just yeah, love yeah. it. I love it, yo. Mike, have you heard of Shaq, Fu? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, you have you heard of Kazam? You know who Kazam is? Nope. <clears throat> oh, oh you don't know Kazam? Oh, no. man. You missed out oh, on Oh, man. Kazam was a terrible movie with Shaq in the 90s. But we all saw it. We all saw it. Shaq had a bunch of terrible movies. Steel. Oh, I don't think you were on the podcast when we talked about Steel. Were you, Mike? I think that was Rich Fan. No, I was here. You were? Oh, yeah, you were. That was was, when we did the uh, recap for the movie. All right, let me share my screen so you guys. Danielle, we are watching uh, Thor, the dark, dark world. Uh, and reviewing it on Sunday or Saturday. Okay, can you guys see this? Can you guys see my okay. screen? Yeah, I can see. Can you see it, Devin and Mike? Yep. Uh, yeah, my shit isn't open, but yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Yes. That's Shaq Fu, Mike. My man Shaq is kicking everybody in the face. Shaq Diesel, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Yo. Mike, as the youngest person on this uh, podcast, what'd you think about the old footage and would you buy that game? No. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I just watched. <laughs> Like a music video. <laughs> oh, they got man, Shaq that was rapping so again too. <laughs> yes, that's why it's even better, yo. Oh my gosh! All right. I oh it. man, they gotta put Kobe in this shit, man. They gotta put Kobe as a special character now because they friends and shit. All right, <laughs> that was good. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's do some comic book news. Uh, two Marvel heroes are losing their powers. Last week's Marvel 2 and 1, number 3, revealed that its title stars, former Fantastic Four members Johnny Storm and Ben Grimm, are losing their powers. The series centers around Grimm and Storm, better known as the Thing in the Human Torch, searching for the lost Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman. They're the two members of the Fantastic Four. With Johnny's powers acting up, the pair went to the specialist to check him out. What she found is that both of the heroes were slowly losing their powers and would continue to do so as long as they were separated from Reed and Sue a byproduct of the cosmic radiation that had given the four of them powers being somehow linked. Oh, that's kind of interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, so we are actually, that's a good tie-in. So this weekend, uh, Devin, Mike, and I are all are doing our first um, comic book roundtable or comic book of the month on um, Jonathan Hickman's run of the Fantastic Four. So we're doing the first three volumes of that, uh, 570 through 582. Uh, those 12 issues and uh, reading the Fantastic Four uh, not to get too much in that because we're going to get into it this weekend but one thing you'll know is Reed Richards is kind of a dick uh, like not even okay. kind of a dick like a no, he, yeah. he's a, the he most is a neglectful dick. husband that you, anybody could but be, then you know? again you have to understand like you, like if he you ever know somebody mind. ridiculously smart they're yeah. kind of a dick sometimes so it's kind of hard not to be he a has dick. a beautiful mind like he really like he has like a short a short bit of autism, yo, because he cannot fuck with. He does not fuck with anybody, but what he's doing at the moment, yo, he can't focus on other shit. Um, uh, da, 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 let me see here. Ah, here's some video game news. Uh, it's just a quick thing. Xbox Party Chat launches on Android and iOS. Did you know that, Mike? 
Uh, um, no, actually. So it's not easy to keep up with your Xbox gaming pals when you venture beyond the living room. After several weeks of public testing, Microsoft has launched Party Chat in its Xbox apps for Android and iOS. If you use Xbox Live, you can use this to your fellow party members through voice or text. There's a lot of cross-compatibility stuff going on. Wherever you happen to be. Uh, so yeah, PlayStation has a PS Messenger app, but it's only text. So this is kind of cool that you can do voice with the app as well. Uh, so Danielle, do you play games at all? You're a gamer at all? Um, I used to do the Tekken and all that back in the day. Now I, I just do Mortal Kombat every now and then, but it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, it's been a while. Sony drops PlayStation VR prices as low as $200. Oh, I want one of those, maybe. I didn't know that. I'll get one. Have you played it? No, but I want one. It's kind of cool. If you go to, like, uh, I tried to... You have one? No, I played it at Best Buy. Me and my wife went. So, basically, she she didn't want to... She was like, oh, this is stupid. And I said, why don't you get it? She don't play video games. So, they had, like, a, a video, like, this, like, game where you don't really do much. You just kind of stand, like, it's like a ride type thing. And it was basically like you were in a shark cage, and they drop you in the water. Uh, I've fucking, done that before on the Samsung VR. And the fucking shark was swimming around, and she started screaming in the fucking Best Buy. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, Sony thinks its holiday PlayStation VR discounts were a success, so it's bringing them back now that it wants to clear some in the winter stock. The company is running a new promo that drops PSVR prices by $100 across the board between February 18th and March 3rd. The sweetest deal by far is the Gran Turismo Sports Bundle. You can get the racing game, the PSVR headset, and the requisite camera for $200. God, that's good. Damn, that is good. Yeah, that I'll is buy good. that when we get paid in the 25th, I swear. You can also <laughs> buy just a headset for $200, although that won't make much sense if you can't, unless you can't find the GTS pack. That's dope as shit. Mm-hmm. There's similar price cuts yeah. for Doom VR and Skyrim VR. Bundles to a respective range of their Yeah, I want the Skyrim VR or maybe... The Batman VR, although I heard that one was kind of lame. I the, the, the Batman shit looked lame as fuck, yo. Well, I I, I spoiled the plot and it was kind of dumb. Yeah, that's, like it was. I don't know. Do you want me to spoil it? It was really dumb. No, like you're gonna laugh. No, don't spoil it. Don't I, spoil I it. Made, I mean, it's been out for a long time now. I still may play time. it. Shut up. I may get this. You'll be disappointed. Yeah, that grand <laughs> really of all people will be disappointed. You and Devin will both hate it. Oh, no, I would definitely. I, I, I look like some shit to me. Like, nah, but they mess with I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. All right, so um, Aquaman star Dolph Lundgren, which is awesome that he's a fucking Aquaman, confirms Mara's rumor, reveals plot details. So do you guys want a semi-spoiler for Aquaman? What's sure. the plot, I guess? So a rumor about Aquaman's know. movie suggested a major change to Mara's history from the DC Comics canon. And a new interview with actor Dolph Lundgren just confirmed it to be true. While speaking to the Las Vegas Review Journal, Lundgren revealed the relationship of his character, Keem Neris, to Amber Heard's Mara would be different from what the comic book fans are used to. It's good to be King. Basically, I'll try to keep the pace down there along with Amber Heard, who plays my daughter. She's trying to convince me to join the right side. In the comics, Neris and Mara were engaged to be married before she left the kingdom of Zebel. Zabel and met Arthur Curry and Atlantis. The two then fell in love and eventually married, becoming the king and queen of Atlantis. But while director James Wan's movie will make that major change to Mara's backstory in the film, it might be adopted another common story from the Aquaman mythos throughout the many reboots from the DC comics. Lundgren also teased an dependent war between those who live underwater and those who live on land. Yeah, that happens a lot in Aquaman. So Mike's been reading, uh, well, he was reading the Rebirth Aquaman. What did you think about that? I loved it. I wanted to keep going, but I fell behind. I just went today to the store to pick up everything that I haven't touched in a long time. For six months and shit. <laughs> like, you know, it was, I had to actually take, put a lot back because they were like, it'll be $350. And I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, I had to put a lot of stuff back. So I just kept, uh, I gotta get, so I'm gonna get back into it now, like this week. So we know That's that uh, Ocean Master and Black Manta will be in the film. So, is, the DC movies have been kind of disappointing, at least to me. Are you guys looking forward to Aquaman and seeing Jason Momoa, uh, Danielle? I think Aquaman would be dope. I mean, I haven't seen the trailer yet, but... They haven't dropped um, it yet. Yeah, I think it would be dope. Um, like you said, these, these DC movies, you're right. They're not not that great, but um, see, you... hopefully, hopefully they... Uh, <laughs> 
Well, James so Wan. The interesting thing about Aquaman is one. First of all, uh, you got me on my sexism because I just knew you were going to say I'll go see anything with Jason Momoa. Uh, <laughs> you know who Aquaman is, right? Danielle, you know who he is, right? Yeah, yeah you seen him, right? Yeah, you seen him. That's how. That's Lisa Bonet's new husband, the was, tall guy. It? Oh, um, oh yes, I love him. Yeah, from yeah, Game of Thrones. He he played. Yeah, he played in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Oh. Um, fine, so. so the interesting yeah, okay. thing, we got you. We got <laughs> you hey, cause he, cause no, cause he, no, that's gonna be good. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, <laughs> we, we just wanted to make sure you were. That's gonna be. Like... That's gonna be amazing. You're tripping. <laughs> he he did good. He did good in his, in his part. Also, the, uh, uh, the director of Aquaman is James Wan, and this is what makes Aquaman very interesting to me. These are the films James Wan is most known for directing. Fast and the Furious. Wrong. Saw, Insidious, The Conjuring, wow. Insidious Chapter 2, The Conjuring this 2. Shit about to turn. It's going to turn weight left, isn't it? Like, <laughs> Listen, if, if they want to do a horror movie underwater, like, that could be some scary fucking shit. Some underwater monsters and shit. Yeah. Could, could be some scary Fast and Furious. Shit. He did Fast 7, yes. Uh, so you looking forward to uh, Aquaman, Mike? Uh, you know, I'm I'm always hopeful for my DC guys. Oh, always hopeful for they've disappointed me every single time. But you know what? That's all right. I'll give them another. <laughs> you chance. keep giving you your chance. money. You keep doing it. I will always if they if it's I don't know. I'm don't a sucker for love too. I'm a sucker for love. It's all it's all good. I just wish they were they were good. But you know, uh, Justice League was just. Oh man, I don't even want to talk about it. A quick one. <laughs> uh, Mark Hamill is going to get a Hollywood walk, star walk of fame. A star it's in the Hollywood of Fame. So, there's that. Uh, let's get into some really nerdy news real quick. Mike will probably shine some light on this one. Uh, intruders, quote, borrowed Tesla's public cloud for cryptocurrency mining. What do you think Yo, about I that, do that. Mike? Tesla I would do that. Tesla isn't Im- immune to the plague of cryptocurrency mining hijacks, it seems. Security researchers at Redlock have reported that intruders gained access to Tesla's Kubernetes system where it deploys and manages c- containerized apps without needing a password, exposing the EV brand's login credentials for Amazon Web Services. From there, the attackers both abused Tesla's cloud resources for crypto jacking and access private data held in Amazon's S3 servers. The culprits were creative, too. While many of these mining attempts rely on public mining pool, the perpetrators here installed mining pool software and pointed a script to reach an unlisted destination. The move made it harder to simply block the crypto jacking based on internet addresses. The intruders also masked the address of their mining pool server through Cloudflare, a minimized process and used to avoid giving away its presence. So, Mike, why don't you uh, why don't say break every, it down for us? Why don't you tell everybody what cryptocurrency mining is and why well, they and why they'll be jealous that you do it. In short, it's basically you get to make your own free money. Um, sort of. So, like, I don't pay utilities in my apartment, so I don't have to pay for electricity. So I have this this thing running 24-7. Every day it makes me, like, $5. And then once I get up to, like, 100 it transfers into an online account for me where I have Bitcoins, fractions of Bitcoins. And then once it builds up enough, and it, it also fluctuates depending on the, uh, the cost of Bitcoin at any given moment, once I have enough or once I feel like transferring, I could just transfer it into my bank account and I get, like, thousand dollars or so every month it's not bad. yikes you hear Extra that Danielle? Free you can money. make your own bitcoin oh wow <laughs> did it look over your head or like you were just like that's some geek shit what are, like well, yeah i just feel? ignored it no didn't even sorry See? not there a go. not a not a nerd sorry looking down on people you don't want to make no, no bitcoin that's, hey, that's, a, of, that's a come up. I know a lot of people that I know a lot of people actually that have did it. My best friend Jasmine, she did it, made low, made low money. But um, yeah, me no, I don't move in that kind of way. Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, nope, not throwing shade though. If you guys did, no. you know, throwing let me get a she's throat. throwing all the shade at you, Mike. No, I'm not Mike. You're awesome. First of all, <laughs> I you. just appreciate you for being able to explain that, Mike, because uh, people have a hard time explaining Bitcoin, and I don't know how. They do, but it's really just the same thing as playing the stock market. Yeah. Except you get to make your own stocks. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, they got some. They got some behind the scenes photos of Shazam, the first one. Uh, they didn't really show a suit though, but there's rumors that it looks like the DC Rebirth suit, which is, I mean, not the DC Rebirth, the uh, Justice League uh, War suit, which is, I guess. I like it better with a hood. Uh, I'll let Devin see this, uh, but um, can you guys see my screen? Not yet. Uh, yeah, we can. Those of you listening, uh, Iris West, first look at Iris West's superhero costume. So there it is. Yeah, I'm just really not feeling that at all. Neither am I. So, Mike, what is your problem with Iris West getting powers? It's just there's too much going on in this show. Why the fuck is she getting powers, and how the fuck are they going to give her some powers? Yeah, it's I just too much. I don't think that's her. I, I don't think it's her. I think it's... I think it's his daughter from the future or something. What? But here's the it thing. Looks like Iris. So I'm going to give you guys a spoiler for being a comic book nerd, but I don't know. I don't know that they're doing this in the show either. But in the comic books, what they eventually found out is that Iris West was actually from the future. Uh, so she. It's a very complicated storyline because the Flash is very complicated when it comes to time, but. Iris West was from the future. So this one says, promotional photo featured costume Iris West will wear during the episode Run, Iris, Run, in which Iris gets Barry Allen's powers and suits up for the first time. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. They've done that before in the comic books where uh, speedsters can siphon siphon off their powers to other people. The costume, which you can see here, features a purple and white color scheme reminiscent of the costumes worn by the Tornado Twins, Barry and Iris' children. Who fight crime? A mysterious young woman who has appeared in a few episodes of The Flash season four, suspected by most to be Dawn Allen, one of the two Tornado Twins. So there you go. They're do- they're doing it, and an ode to that. So that makes sense. See, Mike, being a hater, always being yeah. a hater. First of all, her well, outfit is ugly. They could have yeah, done that. She she's beautiful. That jacket body. looks like some. She's pretty, but that. Jacket looks like something from H and M. It's not oh even. God, Damn, that was that was that was real shit. H and M. It does. H and M do shit, but provides you low cost, that, nice wear to wear out that in just, public. <laughs> that look, jacket does not do anything. Look what just H&M. popped up for me—a chance to shit on DC. Uh, <laughs> Josh Whedon left. Josh Whedon drops out of DC's Batgirl movie. I knew you were going to say that too. You know how excited I was to see Batgirl get a movie and to see Joss Whedon do the, direct a the movie? Yeah, but did you see it was his fault? What happened? Creative differences? Yep. No, read Creative it. Read it. He was like, this was my fault. No, it says, it's the favorite DC film franchise hangs in the balance. The latest headline will come across yet another big setback, but Joss Whedon has dropped out of the Batgirl movie. The Avengers slash Justice League director... Uh, well, he, I wouldn't. He doesn't want to take credit for that. Uh, it's citing the usual creative differences excuse. In a statement to THR, he claims the creative fate was actually his own. Batgirl is such an exciting project, and Warner DC is such collaborative and supportive partners that it took me much to realize that I really didn't have a story. I'm grateful to Jeff and Toby, and everyone who was so welcoming when I arrived, and so understanding when I uh, is there a sexier word for fail. So here's the thing. It might not be a bad thing. There's a lot of women directors out here who can get a chance to do a good superhero film. So uh, I think that they can still make Batgirl work. And Babs has a great story to tell. So hopefully DC still moves forward with this. And hopefully this doesn't end up like the Flash movie, which has already gone through three directors. And still and still to this day doesn't have a date when it's supposed to come out. So. Oh wow, that is. Uh... In fact, did you see? So uh, the original Flash director, um, what's that dude's name? He's the dude that did Dope. Um, he was the director of Dope. Did you guys see Dope? It was good. Rick uh, Rick Famui uh, Famuiwa. I don't know how to say his last name. He's got an African name. I can't say it. But he <laughs> he was supposed to do the Flash movie originally, and he got off the film. <laughs> and he posted something on Twitter basically saying, like, Black Panther to top Justice League total U.S. box office in four days. He retweeted that shit. I knew that w- that had to be shade towards D.C. There's nothing else but shade towards D.C. for that. Um, so I thought that was kind of fucking funny. 
Um, I only got a couple of stories left. Let's see what we got here. Um, I knew, that's too many. Uh, web, uh, so Marvel teases a fresh start for a superhero comic book line. So I guess Marvel's going to do another reboot uh, for the comic book sometime soon. Uh, Mike, you've been behind on the comics. What do you think about this? Another reboot? They just didn't they just reboot like two years ago at the same time Rebirth did. It was kind of a soft reboot after Secret Wars. That's it was like Marvel now, right? Yeah, that's going to be part of our um, uh, our comic series with Hickman, which is an unbelievable storyline, which led up through two and through uh, through Secret Wars. But um, yeah, looks like they're going to be rebooting again. So yeah. Well. There's that. Power to them, I guess. Uh, that's all we got for the news today. Um, I don't think you guys got anything else. Any news stories you saw? Anybody watching things on Netflix? Let's, let's go out there. Throw them Netflix shows out there. I haven't watched watch anything. Uh, yeah, Brennan's behind. Listen, I'm getting geared up for. Um, I'm getting geared up for. Uh, Krypton and Westworld. Oh, you know what? Because I'm mad that you guys are being a hater. That's what I'm going to do. Why, do why, why, why are you going to make Danielle suffer through this? Don't because do Danielle's going to like it. Because she's going to be on my side. Like Listen, Danielle's going to be on my side. Because you guys, you hate trying to get you people. guys are haters. We don't believe you need more people. That's what you're doing. What, right you, what are you talking about? Uh, you, you'll Bring see, Danielle. Krypton. You'll, you'll see. Let me see if I can find You'll see. Danielle, is this thank show? you for coming. Yes, is this, this, is this, a, show? this is a show, yes. Uh, Danielle has no time to watch, probably, because she's Devin. a busy lady. You don't know what she got time to watch. Devin, shut up. Hey, I just You're speak welcome. facts. Uh, I don't know if I can find it, so you might like, be in luck. Okay, what is it on? Netflix? No, it's on, it's sci-fi. on sci-fi. She's not going to watch Oh, it. wow. Oh, look, hey, see, here we go. <laughs> Here comes the hate. I'm just playing. No, I'll I'll, I'll check out. <laughs> I love to check it out. Yo, it's basically about like somebody's trying to go through time to like, uh, find like stop Superman from being born. But they did a cool trailer, but I can't find it. So, whatever. Oh, what are you watching it. on Netflix, Devin? Okay. Uh, definitely watch um, Everything Sucks because it's very quirky. Got some interracial dating in there. You know what I mean? Got It's really good because it literally takes these kids. It picks up these groups of friends. They're geeks or whatever, nerds, whatever you want to call it. Um, three kids. And it's like right around like 2000 or like 99 or 2000 or whatever. So it'll definitely take you back in the time machine. Um, they got AV Club and stuff like that. And then uh, one of the characters gets with the principal's uh, daughter. And in the first episode, the principal breaking on his daughter, like masturbating to a nudie mag. It's it's different off beach shit. It's, it's good. Uh, Tampering by Chris Rock is really good. Um, the End of the Fucking World is a really If you like UK shows. Yeah, uh, I hear a lot um, of people talking and, about that. Uh, if you like UK shows, it's fucking phenomenal. Um, what else? Um, I'm into. I, I watch anime and shit like that, but I'm not gonna spoil you guys with that shit. That's just shit I watch. Uh, um, what else? And then just just regular shows. Waiting for everything to come back this week. Ready for uh, Black Lightning next Tuesday. And uh, Brandon, Wrinkle on Time, yo. I, oh yeah, Wrinkle on Time. I can't. Damn, yeah, you have to. Danielle, you have to go see that movie. And uh, you might have to do it. A Wrinkle in Time. It's an Oprah movie, girl. Ooh! Oh, wow. That's exciting. Uh, and it's like, okay. it comes out it's like in two book. weeks. It's from like a really famous book. Yeah. I read the book. But Oprah's in the movie, again. so. Oh, okay. I don't I would that do it. Yeah. But it looks great. What, it's what, visually. Visually, text, it looks ridiculous. Text me the name. Text Mike, have you seen the Wrinkle in Time trailer? Yeah. Have you said, so Devin, have you, you've obviously seen it. All right, so we'll do this for Danielle so she can see it, and then we'll get out of here. 
Uh, there we go. So let me share right, my I'm, screen. I'm looking at these flights from Tahiti, man. They got a vacation package from Tahiti, from LAX, man. That shit is like uh, $1,900 for, per person, but it's seven days. Shit. Look, it look good. Well, it's good. Uh, this vacation package to Tahiti. And then they got Bora Bora up here, but Bora Bora is definitely $2,000 a person to, for five nights. All right. Can you see the screen, guys? Um, uh, yes. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, yes, it's up. It's up. Yes, yeah. Okay. Let me check this out. Chris Pine, man. These Chris's. Close your eyes. <laughs> Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. See with mine. Close your eyes. Oh, shit. Hold up. Got a little. This is a Disney. This is Disney. You better believe it. You were a top student, but look at you now. You can't keep using your father's disappearance as an excuse to act out. Is that his work? Close your eyes. See with mine. You were a top student, but look at you now. You can't keep using your father's disappearance as an excuse to act out. Is that his work? What's it about? Their dad, he wanted to touch the stars. Imagine that the ant here wants to get to her other hand. The quickest option is to walk across the street. But it turns out a straight line is not the shortest distance between two points. Not if you use a fifth dimension. It's outside of the rules we know of time and space. So the ant arrives in my hand instantaneously so you fall to space more likely wrinkle it where are we we heard a cry out in the universe my father's alive we believe he is and we're here to help you find him we are in search of warriors warriors who serve the good and the light in the universe you're kidding do i look like i'm kidding a little. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Your father's trapped by an evil energy. It's too strong for our light. And the only one who can stop it is you. Be a warrior. Gotta go see that eye. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, Oprah with the, Oprah with the blonde hair. Come on. That shit looks so dope. I'm just. I'm Mike, excited. does that get you excited for Rickman time? Yeah, that that definitely looks like a, no. a good movie. No, Mike. No for you. That's no, I don't see it. Damn. I'll see it. Now, I got nothing against it. I don't want your hate watch. Don't Mike do that. Mike is such sir. a hater, yeah. Such a hater. Well, I said I watch visual? it. No, no. I ain't mm. watch it. Visual. Mike, you're you're a guy that likes visual shit. Like that shit is beautiful. Like, yeah, I know. I will see it in IMAX. Right. I saw. Yeah, yeah, I love going to going IMAX. We're gonna you know, it's expensive on that. shit. We're gonna do a review on that. All right, that's it for today. Uh, we will be back. Uh, we will be back this weekend, like I said, with our comic book review of the uh, Fantastic Four run by Hickman and our Road to Infinity War series with Thor: The Dark World. Make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, anywhere you can get your podcast. So leave us a five-star review. Thank you guys for listening to our Black Panther history episode as well. It's been our most downloaded episode, so thank you guys for that. You can also check out our Black Panther reviews on the feed as well. Uh, so we will be back soon. Thank you. Thank you.